What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at another cool knife from Shirogorov. This is from their custom division, and this is their 111 Deep Space. Super, super cool knife. Uh, they're starting to be a lot more difficult to actually track down and procure uh, in mint shape like this one. But um, anyway, I wanted to remind you before we get started that, uh, you know, always check the website bladezilla.ca. We're in Canada, have access to a lot of Shirogorovs. I'm going to show the screen here. This is right now as I'm filming this. So I just threw on some Koenigs. Uh, I actually have another 111 on there from Shiro and stuff. Uh, lots of good picks, lots of good information, and I have set it now to uh, ship to the U.S. So if there's any information there that you guys got to check out, go take a look. Bladezilla.ca Otherwise, the most important part is this knife. So we are not going to get too involved in the site right now. We're going to talk about a cool knife and show you a little piece of history. So let's get started and take a look. So here we go. And do I need to zoom out? This is a big, big knife uh, to fit on the screen. So there we go. There is your Shergroff 111. Uh, 111 being the uh, 111 mil blade length. And it is the biggest, as far as I'm concerned uh, or aware of, the largest knife in the Shergroff lineup. So we're going to grab some tape measures or a tape measure, get some measurements to this just in case this is your first time taking a look at this absolute pocket sword. Uh, we are coming in at sub 10 inches. I believe the claimed length on this guy is somewhere like eight, or no, sorry, nine and three quarters or something. And that looks about right, nine and three quarters OAL overall length. Blade, it is, geez, four and three eighths type thing. Uh, somewhere in there sharpened. So take a look at the tape measure, pause it, whatever you want to do. It's a big knife, but it's got a small carry factor once in hand, because I'll be honest, it's very thin, which is awesome. Um, I don't have mics to kind of go over every little detail on this uh, at this point. Um, this knife was brought in for a friend of mine and is going out uh, just as quick as it came in. So uh, just a bit of a favor, but I, at least I get to take a look at this one because it is just a work of art. And uh, it's been on my hit list now for a little while. And uh, sometimes timing is just everything. So let's get started. Um, as you can see, custom division written on that blade, which looks awesome, little CD engraving, which is, which is a nice little touch. And then on the back side, I should probably mention it's S110V, which is, uh, you know, starting to be a little less common, I'd say, um, as people are kind of going into the Magna Cut realm, as per the new, uh, um, what's that guy called, the Molten Overkill. So I think we're going to see Magna Cut start to appear a little bit more. It makes sense. People are liking it. And, uh, but S110V, super, super sexy steel and has that sexy factor to it. And uh, absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, in comparison, because we're going to do a couple comparisons today as we always do. But uh, first and foremost, let's just do a general size. And we are going to keep this one actually at the top of the screen because it is big. And kind of walk our way down. And we're going to try to walk down in custom divisions other than I don't have a neon. Uh, so here is the F95 Custom Division Turtle. Beautiful knife. Probably my favorite that I've uh, experienced from Shiro Goroff in their Custom Division. We're going to do the Stellar, which is a Sprint Run. Uh, sprint Run Stellar, which is uh, Custom Division as well, as you guys know. It's a super cool knife. Nothing too crazy there. I'm just going to move this cutting board down a little bit and make some room. Apologize while I do this, but uh, you know what? You get to look at knives for a couple more seconds. So there you go. And I don't have a custom division neon. I'm still trying to hunt one down, but I do have this cool Walter Randolph collab, as you've probably seen on a few different videos. So that should suffice. And you can kind of see we go from neon, stellar, F95 into the uh, Deep Space 111 for sizing. So uh, there you go. Um, I am going to show you as well a standard 111 because that is something where I think a lot of people are going to want to see that comparison but before we go into that because I've got a 111 here I brought some in and my goodness they the demand for those has been through the roof which floors me because they just don't make enough of them. There's your bug out. Please for the love of uh, G.O.D. take a look at that and just uh, come on. 
you know, this is a very EDC friendly knife, but if you look at the length of the handle, it's actually not, uh, it's such an awful comparison, right? But like, if you look at the handle, it should tell you all you need to know. It's not as crazy as you'd think. Okay, well now, the real nice stuff, okay? The 111 Multi-Row Shurgoroff, full production piece. Now, I have done a video on this. Um, I don't know the timing. Um, I think I filmed it actually uh, earlier this week, so I don't know the timing on when this stuff is coming out. Um, I tend to film a lot, and then I'm very busy, and uh, so uh, I don't know. I'm not as organized that way, but um, I will say this. One of, the t one of the things I mentioned in the video about the 111 is why aren't they doing... You know, they're obviously going up custom division, and making some real cool knives that way with some real cool S10 110V steel. And uh, for the production piece, they're doing M390 with carbon, right? I would love to see, you know, this shuffle right here, where I go, we get three models. I'd love to see the Chromax standard version, because I think it would introduce this size of knife to a lot more people. Because, you know, I'm six foot three. Uh, I'm a big guy, I've got extra large gloves, as you've probably met, heard if you've watched a couple videos. And uh, this knife, originally I thought would be just absolutely gangbusters big, but it's totally carryable. And uh, having, having you know, a, a bigger option in the fleet is certainly welcome. Especially if, you know, you're in the field and you wear gloves or whatever. Uh, you know, it would just be nice to have a bit more of a user. Uh, than this because you know the the barrier to entry on this is still I think 12 to 50 US Which is uh, you know when you're starting to get into high-end money for production and you know if you watch the video I agree the money and the value it's certainly here But for the you know 800 bucks 700 buck kind of crowd it'd be lovely to have a Chromax version Okay, and that is the gen 5.1 and if I am not mistaken, that's a 3 mil blade and I don't actually know this looks a little chunkier. That wouldn't shock me if that's three and a half. So why don't we do a quick comparison, actually. And then I'll put one of these guys away. There you go. Does that look a little fatter to you on the deep space? It wouldn't shock me if it was. A little bit. Half mil. It's definitely not four mil, I don't think. But it's definitely a little chunkier, which is cool. So, let's put this guy away. One, one last flex. Multi-row bearings versus rollers. Love this knife. One of the one of the best feeling multi-row bearing production pieces, in my opinion. Okay, that is tucked in safely into its little foamy case. So, where do we get started on this 111? Well, um, they've obviously had a couple different variations of this, and uh, you know it's not really known on the production side where Gen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the production side, where it starts, where it ends, etc. This guy, um, I think they've done a bronze, they've done a full tie, they've done the deep space, and I'm not familiar with too many other pieces. So, um, by far, the, the full tie is the highest demand, and then I'd probably say, uh, I'd probably put this guy behind it. Uh, just because it's so light, coming in at, why don't we find out? It, it's, to me, probably in that sub five ounce kind of range, I'm thinking. It does feel pretty, uh, pretty solid. But uh, let's just measure here. Let's grab a cloth. So we gonna do metal on metal. And reset the weight. There we go. I'm guessing, any, any guesses? I'm saying uh, 4.8, 4 4.9, something like that. Five, ooh, on the nose. And this scale seems to always measure a little bit heavy. So five, and then we'll switch it to grams, 141. And just out of curiosity, let's weigh the standard 111, which feels lighter because of the blades thinner, 128, or for my American friends, four and a half. So there you go, four, four and a half and five, or uh, somewhere within 0.1 of that, I imagine if it's 5.1 or 4.9, whatever. So there you go, it's somewhere close to that. So hopefully that isn't too much information for you, but uh, there you go. So what is so cool about this knife? Well, for starters, can I, can I, I don't know if I need to keep refreshing you guys on this, but just look at it, okay? Just look how good it looks. 
Shiro's Carbon, or I think they call it like Carbo Tie, something like that, Carbo Tie. It, it's 3D machined, okay? So you get all kinds of cool angles as you roll with the light, both kind of forward and back, as you see, but also side to side. And then when you mix the two, it's just uh, a real special feel. Okay, like, look at this, the, the purples pop, they turn kind of black, the, the metallics turn to gloss. This is actually an excellent example of this knife because uh, the pattern is just really, really nice on this one. Almost like two eyes and a mouth, <laughs> two eyes and a mouth, maybe like a shark mouth here. <laughs> just looks cool. Lots of nice pattern. Um, and as well, if we're looking at more detail here, like look at the pivot hardware. To me, that's got to be, it's almost like a two-piece polish on that. Is that a, like a satin polish on the outside of it? Looks great. On the other side, I imagine it's the same thing. I'm trying to look at the camera, not the knife. But yeah, it's got a polish on the hardware. I would argue this one's never been opened up because it just uh, there's no, no marks of any kind on it. Or if it was, um, they did it very, very incognito, but the hardware is anodized and there's not even a single scratch on there. So uh, this is a very good example. On the blade itself, we can see, you know, a couple of the same, a couple of similarities actually to the 111 uh, production. So we still have this little tab inside the fuller here. And I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out, in that video I talked a little bit about what's that for? You know, what's the, uh, what's the point of that? And, and what I had said was it kind of fills up the hole a little bit. I, I think, I think personally, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's there aesthetically. It looks terrific. But if there is a purpose, it kind of fills that gap up so you don't sink too in. So you can thumb flick this. I'm not going to do this. My hand is wrapped around a tripod. You can thumb flick it. You can reverse flick it as well. And it's one of the few Shiro's that actually you can, can do that with. Like I might, yeah, it's the detent's definitely thumb flickable. It's, it's not going to be hard, but like I said, this one is not uh, mine for the, for the doing. Uh, and I don't want to drop it or anything, so I'm trying to be gentle. Um, so it's one of the few shear grow offs that actually has a couple different deployment methods other than the flipper. It has the thumb, it has the reverse flick, which is awesome. And uh, I, I think that looks so good, and it makes it very practical. Um, some of the others being, I'd say, probably the Mini Quantum. You might be able to do that on. Um, as well, if we're looking close on the blade, we can kind of see like a stone wash inside the polish polished flats. Hopefully you can pick that up. I haven't polished this or windexed it or anything, but you can kind of see if the camera wants to pick that up. It's all stone washed inside here, which is cool. And it almost looks like a, a nice bullet. If you look at it, like just kind of blur your eyes a little bit. It's kind of like got a little tip there. It just looks terrific. Absolutely terrific. Now, S110V, it's... Yeah, some people love it, some people... I, I don't even know if there's anybody who would hate it. I, I can't see why you wouldn't love it. Probably sharpening it would be a bit of a pain, but I don't see this you this knife as a heavy user. I think this is going to be one that uh, is, is just going to be a cherished piece that's going to be flipped, honestly. One of, uh, one of 50, I believe, on this one, if I'm not mistaken. And because of where they write that, I think... Uh, because it's an inset kind of liner, or they have a name for it. I think it's called like a tab lock or something. Um, I would guess they're going to write it underneath the backspacer. So I'm curious um, what number this one is. If it's number one, I'm telling you right now, it's no longer for sale. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, oh, sorry. Let's maybe put the light in the right spot. So there you go. Hopefully you guys can see it's right under my thumb. Uh, it's I can't focus this while I'm uh, holding a light, obviously, but it's in there, and I can see it is CD twenty one oh one thirty eight. So number thirty eight. So that'll be a fifty, which is beautiful. So, whew, it's not number one. That sucks, but number thirty eight is certainly cool. Now, if we look at some of the other details on this thing, I just think it's unbelievable. Like, look at the tab. Look at that tab. How cool is that? How they've machined that all out. How sick is that? Little lightweight savings there. So they mill inside there. They obviously mill in the blade. They've milled inside the handle of this as well for weight savings. 
It is a thicker blade, obviously, than the production, so there's some added weight. Which is fine, guys. It's, you know, it's a four and a quarter inch blade. That's, uh, you know, sub five ounces, likely. Because my scale runs a little hot. Look at the milling on that tab. It actually looks very similar to the production piece, and I'm going to quickly grab that just as a reference point. So that looks very similar, actually. Uh, no issues there. Beautiful. So I love seeing the similarities uh, in these pieces. I just love the kind of see what they're doing between them. So we have, uh, I believe it's a titanium frame. I could be wrong. Uh, I wouldn't, sh yeah, I I'm guessing it's a titanium tab lock in there. Do we have a lock bar insert? I don't think we would need one on this. It's smooth as silk, I can tell you right now. And it runs on single roll roller bearings. Um, I've talked about this in the past, so Shiro starts at single row uh, bearings, SRBs, and then they go into multi-row bearings. So a single row is your standard kind of uh, bearing in a circle pattern. Multi-row bearings is kind of three balls in a row to make a pinwheel pattern at an angle. And then they go into this guy, which is um, roller bearings, which is like a hot dog or a needle bearing in a uh, perpendicular track around a circle. And then they go into multi-row bearing or multi-row roller bearings, which is, as far as I know, reserved for their production or their custom pieces. I don't know if they've ever put them on custom division. I'd love to know if someone has that answer. Let me know below. But uh, as far as I know, that uh, these are all single-row roller bearings on the CDs, or in some cases, uh, multi-row bearings. So super cool. I'm just getting lost in this. Uh, feel this blade because it is heavy and heavy plus rollers oh it's so smooth this is just incredibly smooth like look at this look at this like, you don't even have to touch it it just it's silk and, and i always say this with my shiros like i love how if you if i were to put this up vertically like this okay like that I like how I can park it in any spot and it doesn't it doesn't move. But like with the slightest little look at this. It's just it floats. It's controlled, it's not guillotine. You're not gonna cut a finger off with this unless you literally are flipping it around like a ninja star. It's uh, just an incredible, incredible piece. We've got the Shira Goroff anodized logo as well, down by the lanyard or the backspacer. And that's something that uh They've started doing a little bit more on some of the pieces. I don't know how it's attached, but I'm assuming it's bonded in there because it is carbon. So I think that's a nice little touch instead of putting it on the blade. I love how they do that. I'd like to see it more, but it's obviously a cost to that. Now the backspacer is 3D milled, which I would expect at this price point. Um, in 2023 right now, uh, I'm filming this in August. So um, I think aftermarket on these guys you know, is anywhere from, depending on condition, I'd say, you know, um, mid, mid 3000 US uh, and up, depending how much, how badly you want it. You know, as I've seen with a few different pieces, uh, if you want it, people, uh, they're willing to pay for it if it's mint. So um, in terms of feel in hand, fit and feel, it is identical, I'd say to the production piece, but it is a little fatter, right? In hand, the pocket clip feels very nice inside my palm. And I've got lots of room coming off of my, my pinky, uh, quite a bit. So if I was to wear a glove with this, no issues. The jimping is certainly usable. And in fact, if it wants to focus, there's even a little bit of, I don't know if you'd call it micro jimping. Hopefully the camera can pick up on this at the right angle. But there's like little, little bits of milling inside there. And I don't think... I don't think that's found on the production piece. So let's take a look here and compare them. So CD on the left and production on the right. So you see how there's like the little lines, the little mill lines, the 3D milling. That looks so good. Cool. I never noticed that. See, these are the things you don't notice till you have one in your hand. Um, centering, obviously dead center. Like, come on, <laughs> it's dead center. And the tolerance is very tight, very, very tight. It's almost like sure. I was like, yeah, you know what? Um, how, how much room do we need? Okay, yeah, we can do that. Let's add an emphasis to it. 
And then as we rotate the back spacer, it turns into our lanyard hole, which, uh, you know, I've seen, I've, I've talked about this in the past, where some other knives, they do like the Stellar, they just drill it through and do uh, a little hole there. And it's a bit of an eyesore at times for some people. And then others, uh, they, they continue to do it on like the F95, same kind of thing. They put it right into the back spacer and it looks terrific. So you can kind of get the whole pattern of it. I think that looks amazing. And that is no different than this, which was actually made prior to the F95T. And I'm just curious. No. So sometimes I, I like to show the tolerances between the flipper tab and the back spacer, but they don't have the squished in top here. And that's one thing I noticed too, is like they haven't done any machining on top or b b below beneath the flipper tab. Sometimes they do that on some of the other models to just, as you open it, it kind of is nice to have a little soft spot there, but uh, no concerns on this one. And as I'm looking at it, we still have the same mill lines up through here at a nice little angle, which is just incredible. The material selection is just through the roof. The, uh, the pivots, or sorry, pivots, my goodness, well, the pivot, and then uh, the screws for the hardware are their proprietary little little chunky screwdriver flathead style. Don't use a flathead screwdriver, use the correct tool and uh, you're not going to have any problems. Or if you really want to disobey, you know, use a penny so you don't scratch it. Now this one is going to be the captive pivot system because you can see how it's recessed in. So underneath that should be a ball bearing which clocks that one side so it can't uh, rotate while you're tightening or loosening. And then these little guys are anodized and uh, obviously show no signs of wear, but um, you know, that's one way to tell if it's been opened up is just take a look at those little anodized bits. You can often tell that way. And then as we wrap around to the bottom here, we can obviously see they followed the, the production style, right? They kind of do that mill. There we go. We can kind of pop it out there, but they've milled it down. A lot more detail work though. You can just tell compared to the production piece. A lot more detail towards there and the nice little roll on the edge. And then a nice curve up for the, uh, the handle. Hope you can see that a little better, but you can see that bowl in there is beautiful. The flipper tab is nice and smooth. Nice transition between the carbon and the flipper tab, just beautifully done. And actually looking in here, you can see as well, I don't know why they do that, but they've even milled multiple passes here to get your finger in nice and smooth. Interesting, that's not on the production piece. Nice and smooth transition into that tab. That's cool. And I will show you, without trying to drop one of these, the difference there. Well, it's kind of there. Maybe that's where they get it from. See how there's that little milling pass here? That's cool. I love uh, I love comparing production to custom divisions. It's just such a different experience. Like for the for, like another thing that I noticed like right off the hop, it's how smooth this is as well, and how the the lines are generally very similar, but just like to get them smooth, it's multiple multiple passes. Everything around the knife in hand is just solid. Um, just an incredible piece. I'm really lucky to experience this. I would love to experience a full tie version of this. I know they're out there, hard to find. And uh, I would love to see the difference between that and this. I don't know how much better you're gonna be able to get. It'd probably just be a little bit heavier. Oh gosh. Just floats home so smoothly. On the back side, we obviously have the same clip, I believe, as the, oh no, different clip. My God, my eyes are killing me here. Different clip on the production piece. So how, what do we take of this? Well, they've milled out the inside of the entire clip. That's a pretty big detail. Am I blind? So that's pretty sweet. Uh, but overall, general theme of the clip and size, very similar. Um, so we have that nice kind of zone in the middle there for a bend point, weight savings, and then a nice deep bill on that as well. See how deep that one is in? That's nice and nice and cool. And it matches the hardware as well, which is just a nice touch, which looks terrific. I love this thing. Oh, I don't want this one to go. 
And then the milling, obviously, throughout the carbon fiber all along the back. It's just rounded. Like, the details are just, just higher all around. All the milling work. Oh, inside, another, another little thing. You can't see it, but it's all milled out on the inside as well. On the, on the lock, everything. Oh, man, this is just such a beautiful knife. I don't want it to go. Why, why must it go? Listen to how high my voice is, how much I care beautiful and then I talked about this as well in the production piece I was talking about this spot right here okay they did that jimping there too and I can't figure out why it's there right it's not functional I don't think unless people can front flip it but you've got jimping on the top and then as I rotate that down see where that jimping starts and then it protrudes out of the frame like it's uh it's obviously not a glass breaker or anything like that, but maybe it's there to protect the handles if you drop it. Could that be it? If you drop it, let's just say I drop it, where is it going to hit? Well, if it hits here, it'll hit carbon. If it hits there, it'll hit metal. Up here, it hit carbon. So, no, I don't know. Like, if it falls that side first, it's going to hit the backspacer. If it falls this side first, I guess it would hit there. I, I, I'm trying to figure out, I can't flip that. I can't gain grip on it and, and open it, so, and I'm not going to reach, I can't, I don't know. I would love to know what that's for. I'm sure there's a reason for it, otherwise they wouldn't do it. That's literally on the Custom Division stuff. There is not any stone unturned when it comes to the details, so there must be a detail that I'm missing. Actually, there's probably about 1,500 details I'm missing, because uh, that's that's me. God, look at the milling around here on the clip. Incredible. I'm just I'm just floored looking at this thing, man. Like, you know, I get to see a few custom division knives, and uh, I wish I could see more of them and kind of experience them, um, kind of start to finish. I'd love to see some models from the mid 2000s and stuff, and just to kind of see what they're doing. The tens, the twelves, the fifteens, etc. I'd love to see kind of. Like a 2015 custom division. Like I'd love to see what they're doing then and kind of compare the two now. Just a beautiful knife. I'm uh, I'm very jealous of the owner of this one. Very very jealous. And uh, am I crazy? No, there's not. Uh, no, there's still two bolts. I thought maybe on some previous 111s. I thought for some reason they may not have had that additional bolt there. I'm probably wrong. As is customary. I'm sure I'll hear about it in the comments. Um, so I've talked about that S110V uh, blade. I've talked about the custom division etching on there, which is just beautiful. I've talked about all the milling on this handle and how smooth it is. Um, how you get lost in it. The purple color works for me. Beautiful. It's kind of a midnight purple. Um, S110V is beautiful. Fit and finish is through the roof, as expected. The The backspacer matches perfectly the pattern of the micro milling oh i don't know what else to even mention i just uh, sometimes like to chat show the knife and hopefully you guys get a good feel of what it is and what it isn't so what else am i missing here that pocket clip is that's put in internally isn't it yep just like production nice nice little detail i love that I transferred over all of that stuff. And as you can see, the light inside, hopefully, some nice little details inside that are poking through. But, uh, man, what a winner. Love this stuff. Okay, guys, well, I think that is going to wrap it up for the Sure Grow Off 111 Deep Space. Appreciate you guys stopping by. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, please leave them below. Otherwise, check out the website, bladezilla.ca, and take a look. Otherwise, we will catch you guys later. All right? Peace.